we are reacting to the PvP. I'm pretty much going to be giving you guys my rundown on what I was thinking about the crazy Blade Yukong thing that people kept commenting about. I haven't even read all the comments. Everyone's told me about the comment section. I haven't read it yet. So that might be its own thing, but we're going to get into that and then we'll figure that out. But yeah, this is something that we do with the uh, with Vulcan and Grim commentates. Tamias Cup. Tamias is the one that runs it. And then we just we all have a good time. It's normally supposed to be for just having fun. This one was a little toxic. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not going to lie to y'all. This one was a little toxic from all ends. I got cucked. I got super cucked. All right. That explains why I have a fucking Yukong on my team. Y'all know I don't like Yukong, but it is what it is. Anyhow, I want to show y'all what's going on. So today we're going to be reacting to everything and I'll skip through some bits and pieces here and there and then we'll go from that. All right. Tobias Cup PvP tournament, a massive Too loud or what? The creators in this one. I'll leave all their links in the description. Go give them some love. We've got EO Moon. Blade is F tier, bro. Back in this one. <laughs> massive shout out to Tobias. You guys know the drill. He organizes all of this and we just upload it to my channel. And also another massive shout out to Grimo for helping me cast this one. But let's get into it. Hey everyone, Tobias here, and welcome to the next installment of the Tobias. So you didn't go to the gotcha cast. PvE. Listen, Ice, it's Tectone's fault. All right, Tectone's fault. <laughs> memory chaos into a PvP game mode by pitting content creators against each other. And of course, this time we've got some returning players, Iwan Gacha Smack versus God Doggo and Destiny. <laughs> They've had some wonderful showings in the past, and I'm excited to see what they've been Bro, time out. I, we're going to keep it going, but like, Doggos, fix your fucking profile picture, man. What is this? Why do you always do this? to see what they've been cooking especially because this cup is for the 2.1 version which means Acheron is going to be available for both teams to pick up as the rate up banner unit and honestly she is so damn good in design as well as power level so I'm very very excited to see what uh, they have been cooking and without further ado let's um, take it away our casters Grimrow as well as Vulcan all right, and here we are with the pick and ban phase. I am Vulcan here with Grimro. Keen to see what we have in this pick and ban phase. Let's jump into it, Grimro. Okay, team one is kicking us off here with a Ruan May. It's always a pleasure to hear Grim's voice. It was only two teams. Yeah, so it's it's always a pair, right? Myself and Smack and then versus, uh, and then that's not a sentence at all. Then versus Doggos and Moon. So you always have a pair when it when it comes to these uh, Tamias Cups because it's basically like creators getting together and you can really just think of it as a creator cup, creator PVP. A ban, of course, taking out the queen of every composition, a very good idea if I do say so much. Now I'm gonna explain the May ban. I wanted May. They expected me to get May, which means they had no intention on, on banning May. I banned May because the smart person, the smart player should never let me get May. This is a forewarning to anyone that ever does PvP. Never let the follow-up dual DPS uh, stouting player, don't let me get May. Don't let me get May. I banned May. One, because we didn't even want first pick. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, first pick in PvP is a trap. It's the worst possible thing to get. It's the worst possible pick to get. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is. It is. We banned May because we were under the assumption that our opponents would be smart and then they would ban me, which is why we ban me. Myself here, Vulcan. Yeah, definitely just a universally good unit trying to What if you want an E0 zero character? What are you asking okay, about? What does that mean? Team two shooting back with a ratio ban here. Now this is- You gonna disagree with me? Hey man, you guys can totally disagree with that. That's totally fine. I think first pick is bad. It's a great one because Sam, the boss of this memory of chaos, is notoriously difficult. And do I, okay, do I need to explain why I think first pick is bad? Is that is that what's happening here? I think first pick is bad because it it doesn't set you up. Second pick gives you two characters off rip. It allows you to set your play immediately. It it allows you to set up your play immediately. First pick allows you to grab what you think is the most valuable. That was great back then. That was great during uh during a time period when PvP was first introduced and we only had 20 or something characters, right? Now we're creeping up on what 40 or 50. We have so many characters that banning something frame one, there's a replacement for it. The only characters in the game that don't have a replacement is May. As of right now, the only character that you can ban that you cannot replace is May. You can find a substitute that kind of does something, but no one really does what May does. Everyone else in the game has a replacement. DPS characters have a replacement, sustains have a replacement, 
um harmony characters have a replacement we have so many busted harmony characters now that they all have some form of like i can do what that other character does but i can't do the thing that they do this way right and then nihility characters of course have replacements not all of them of course but some of them do then you get into like why something would get banned no one's banning Pela frame one you know what i mean like Pela is not going to be the number one ban unless for some reason Pela becomes the most picked out of nowhere no one's doing that so Pela is usually pretty safe so once you get past the ban phase, which is banning your first couple of characters, you get into, or your first character, my bad, you get into the first pick. Picking first, now you're gonna see, the priority. we picked up, uh, breaking that button. and this was, this was, this was completely Smack's idea. All right, well, so I gotta, I gotta throw him under the bus real quick. Oh, Smack grabbed Pela, and I promise you this was not the play. I didn't wanna do this. And I'm, I'm not saying this, cause like, oh man, I was, I was smiting these like, no, 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 no. I knew, like, okay, the thing is, Destiny and I have won the last two cups, which means uh, the, the first cup that she's, or was it one, right? The last cup, there we go. She's won the last two, and then her and I won the last one, right? So what she learned from Dreamy, carry it over. And then what I taught her about drafting, carry it over. So it's kind of like fighting yourself, but not as much, right? And then she also has Sarah that can help her out with like what to do. T TLDR, we know each other's accounts, once again, there are certain characters that you should, if you know my account, you should not let me get these characters. I'm not gonna say all the characters, but you should not let me get these characters. I wanted Swan so bad. I wanted Swan to be the first pick so fucking bad. If it wasn't May, I wanted Swan. If it wasn't May, I wanted Swan. So when I kept telling you guys, Destiny fucked me over, this is what I mean. I, I mean that she fucked me, like knowing my account from frame one, she, and I, when I say frame one, I mean, her not letting us have um second pick frame one we were getting fucked over i wanted swan as number one pick so goddamn bad but smack does not look at kits or characters prior to them coming out like he's aware if someone tells him but he doesn't really look at it right and he's not in like the creator experience server or anything like that so he doesn't have he's not privy to certain information that some of the other creators are in this case acheron a few of us, uh, Destiny and I, we're very knowledgeable at this point in time about Acheron due to some of the things that we might have access to, right? And so with that in mind, that's just not true. You you can't beat me in regular PvP. The only reason you beat me in this one is because the things that I just stated. It, it is it is what it is. We're going to keep it a buck. There's, there's quite literally nothing, no game you can beat me in. Stop. Anyhow, what happened here was Smack was under the impression that Pela and Silver were Acheron's best go-tos. And he, at that time, wasn't aware of the different options that could happen. So Swan wasn't in his radar as number one because he thought Destiny was gonna pick up Pela. Absolutely, okay, our first pick here for team one is Pella, which has pretty good synergy with Acheron, who is available this time. Yeah, Pella definitely, Pella stock's going up with Acheron, so obviously gonna be a pick when both teams do have access to Acheron during oh. this draft period. Okay, we're seeing a continued theme here with Team 2 deciding they want to pick up a priority Nihility debuffer as well. They are also picking up the other premium imaginary DPS here in Imbibitor Lune. Picking up that and Imbibitor Do you, you guys huge. see where we're, uh, where we're getting fucked right now? going to let them have Sparkle. I don't think, but if they do, it's going to be a big opening. Okay, and just as you say, Vulcan. Now you see, because Destiny knows my account, once again, frame one she was aiming to like this wasn't even like a pvp versus smack at this point she was purposely aiming to fuck over my account which is why i will never play pvp against her again not only did she ban ratio knowing that my imaginary character of choice is ratio she then took the other imaginary character there are only two in the game ratio daniel eliminated off rip she took swan i won't blame her for this one right that's a that's a me and smack thing or smack and i thing somehow we ended up prioritizing pale over smack or pale over swan it is what it is we took sparkle because at this point i now have to play anti-destiny or rather anti-doggos i can't stop destiny from getting what she wants because she already has it acheron and swan that's it that's really all she needed and then she was done she could have picked up any bullshit nihility character and still performed the best way possible only five dps that are usable quickly side two acheron zila ratio dill kafka slash swan combo yeah so none of this is gonna change what i'm getting at
<laughs> Team One here is not interested in enabling that inhibitor and sparkle combo here. They're gonna steal that right away for themselves and deny Team Two that god combo. Not just denial, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know if Smack uses anyway. free to play account. Absolutely. I don't think so. Okay, Team Two is banning Welt here. Now you see, this was personal. They banned Welt, so not only. Could we not ensure that he gets his two nihilities early on and we call it a day? Even if I needed wealth, which would have been fair, they got rid of it. There are zero imaginary characters for me to use now. We're And even though this PVP, which I also think this is kind of bullshit, but whatever, even though this PVP doesn't use the point system, it also doesn't allow you to allow you to use Adalons beyond E2. As most of us creators who are day one, we have multiple Adalons when it comes to Zila, um, so we can't use that. In some cases, you end up getting really fucking lucky and you activate it because obviously PVP wasn't a thing back then. So it cancels you out from using it. While I could have used Zila to a, an immediately clear any side, right? I could not use Zila by default, which is why you don't see Zila get banned when it comes to Destiny and I, because both of us have an E4 plus Zila. So there's zero reason for us to ever ban it because we can't even use it. But we also can't do things based off a point system. So like in the event we could do the point system, I could grab E4 Zila. It wouldn't cost a lot. And then I could just bullshit with four stars. Yeah, almost every, the only creator I know that doesn't have Zila period is Smack. Smack's the only one who like purposely chose to not get Zila because he doesn't like her. Oh, and, and Tectone, and Tectone. They're like the only ones that I know that don't have Zila. I guess Goba too, because Goba doesn't like the, the girl characters, but that's a different story. It seems their strategy is to completely take away all forms of imaginary break and hopefully uh, like Techie has Zila? Oh, okay, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Yeah, we'll have to see picks on who picks he just up hates the main her? units for that Sam battle. Silver Wolf is going to be a big one and a highly sought after one as well. Okay, absolutely, Vulcan. Couldn't have said it better myself. And the final ban for Team 1 here is going to be Ting Yu, taking away another premium harmony unit. Yeah, just a universally safe ban. We banned Ting Yoon because neither of us needed Ting Yoon. I'm going to let the rest of the bans play out, or the picks play out after this. Actually, I can just probably skip to the end, right? I can skip to the end and show you guys all the picks. Once we started getting towards the bottom, which this is just Acheron, right? Once we got towards the bottom, it was just like really just pick, 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 pick. There, were, there weren't really many any um difficult picks or anything like that. Should have picked Kafka Branya in my opinion. The problem with trying to grab Kafka Branya <laughs> yeah. was I didn't have a DPS character. Hey, yo, Coda, thank you for the uh, the prime. I appreciate that. Invader Coda, I like that. Like Invader Zim, that's pretty cool. After we picked Sparkle and then they grabbed Silver, we ended up getting Kafka and Blade. The reason we got Kafka and Blade is because they pretty much banned any option for Smack to ensure that he was going to be able to get the Nihility units, <laughs> yeah. which was pretty key. At this time, Smack was also not aware or confident about the other Nihility units being used on the team, that being Wanifin or Sampo or anything like that, which I already knew he could get away with as an Acheron player. But not having well, not having like you needed to sustain, there were a couple of different things that like he was definitely going to have to play it. You know what I mean? He was going to have to play it. And at this time, it's not like we could play it early to figure it out. So unfortunately, Smack just didn't have that understanding and experience because he couldn't play it early. So I, I didn't even blame him. I can't blame him for that. It is what it is. Now, there were two plays when I grabbed Kafka. One, if in the event there was something left on the table and I could convince him late to grab it, like instead of Yukong, he could have grabbed the other Nihilia unit. I could have solo with Kafka, like free. I, I would have bodied the, the second half with Kafka, no problem. My Kafka's fucking dope. I know how to do that, but I couldn't do that, right? And then second was gonna be if they left Branya on the table for whatever reason, I would have been able to grab Blade and Branya. Now I thought they would have grabbed uh, anything else to be completely fair, but they didn't. And I didn't want Yukon, but I couldn't, we couldn't leave Kafka on the table. And that's kind of what the problem was. While Moon didn't need to aim for Acheron, Swan and Kafka, I knew that was gonna be the team that if left on the table, she would pick it up and then there would be no winning. That's a zero cycle comp. Even against Sam, it's doable, but it's hard. But the point is that it's doable. There was no reason for me to leave that on the team. Kafka was a 100% like, I can't let you have it, so we have to take it. Ting Yoon was a, I can't let Doggos have it, so we have to take it, or we have to ban it, right? Because we didn't need Ting Yoon, and Doggos would have significantly benefited from having Ting Yoon. Yukong was both a take and a, I need something. There's no buffer for Blade because all of them are banned, right? Sparkle is a great buffer for, uh, uh, yeah, a great buffer for Blade. Didn't we pick Silver Wolf before you picked Kafka and Blade? Yes, you you took Silver, which again, remember what I said earlier, Smack's intent was Pale of Silver. 
So if you were going to grab Swan and Kafka or anything like that, that was on the table. It, it didn't matter if you didn't care about it. You had already shown us that you were playing to eliminate my options versus versus getting your best options. It's it's all about the way that the draft went. I'm, I'm really trying to like piece this together while not going in order. I'm just explaining what happened with the draft. Anyhow, the Yukong pick is straight up because Yukong was going to ensure my crit rate and crit damage and the timing of using her ult along with Sparkle and then Blade having the follow-ups using Yukong to time that, all that kind of fun stuff. Lynx is obvious. That's going to be for, for Blade, of course. And then rounding out Smack's team was Kafka, Pela, Akron, and then Depard. Depard is for Trend because I told him about that. So he was pretty confident in me telling him that. And it was what it is, or it is what it is. And that would have been fair for him. Akron is Akron. Kafka and Akron together, plus Pela, should have dominated anything on the board. I'm going to keep it a buck. But I need to see his run to see what happened. So with that in mind, we can pretty much go on into the next run. Does anyone have any questions, like quick questions before we jump into my explanation of the run? Doesn't your sparkler already get blades 100%? She gets them at like 89 or 90 something percent, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted damage because there's no HP buffer in the game. Blade just receives crit damage. Like he, he doesn't gain anything else. You know what I mean? So like Yukong was the, and he does benefit a little bit from attack. So the only thing that would have been beneficial to him would have been Yukong. Just want to let you know that your blade was really good. Yo, Leaf, thank you. I spent a month, three weeks grinding for bullshit ass blade pieces, knowing I was never going to, I'm not going to say never, but I was not trying to use him again. There was no cycle penalty, penalty? No. N none of your standard PVP rules were in mind at the time of playing this game or, or playing the PVP. Available, but I do see where they are lining up with that links for this formation. Okay, and of course, Team 2 are going to pick up their own Akron as mid, well. Yes. Very interesting. No Fushwana, but let's see how things pan out. All right, here we are with Team 1. Side 1, we have EO running the team of Sparkle. I like the little Yukon, pop out he does at the bottom Blade there and with the uh, logo. Now, like I said, definitely see the synergy with Lynx in the Blade in this one. But the Yukong is a bit of a misfit to me here. Can you pick anything up from this one, Grimro? No, this is definitely a very interesting combination of units Vulcan. Of course, Yukong known for her massive 80% increased attack buff on her skill, but Blade can't really make use of that. So very interested to see what EU is putting together here. He's going to lead off. Can't with believe he just called me EU. On Blade, increasing his How dare he? Hit and boost Blade straight up with that sparkle. No second kill for Yukong? Did I not have... Sparkle, oh, wait, you're Yukong, you're talking about like running two Blade kills on the relic set. No, no, no. Like I said, definitely see the synergy with... No, yeah. I, I wanted fleet on her specifically because kill did nothing for me. It was like, in order for me to give her the effect resistance she needed to trigger kill, I would lose out on some other stats. Giving her the HP not only helped her like take a little bit more hits, but it also increased her attack by just a little bit and everyone else's attack um just just to kind of like cap off some of the things right because blade still benefits from i know i won't go over it in this thing because they won't show but blades uh the skill when he transforms his blade it still does have a little bit of an attack percent influence so having just a little bit so that you know i'm already over capped on crit damage i might as well just build a little bit into attack because i can't get hp so that's how that would work i will not be road. pvping with you as well no, no ma'am i don't play with cheaters combination of units vulcan of course you can't notice of that so very interested to see what eu is putting together here he's gonna lead off with an immediate yeah 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 tell it tell it to the tell it to the hand bro and boost tell it to the hand right up with that sparkle he is ready to go i had to work for this by the way guys Lynx, Lynx has some speed that's fucking ridiculous and i don't even i think i was running the sprightly von quack but i truly don't remember if I was running that on this links, but the goal was to get links to go for, I had to have links go first so that she could apply her healing uh, bonus or skill to blade, which gave him the increase, right? Which would set him up for the next couple of turns, as well as you guys can see it over here. These two, I could line them up to get hit. They could hit blade. I, I had this run was so fucking annoying to still not get a one cycle. It pissed me off. Yeah, definitely. So I'm curious to see. It, not even. Get out of this blade's first I won't spoil. And some of you have already seen it, but still. It's quite respectable. So we are going to get some decent. Piloting this team to what he was does ass. With this Yukon, whether he spam skill to try and get his energy up as much as There's possible. There's my hit. Gain the access There's my talent. Level. Really good damage on the talent. Follow up there from the blade as and well. And because I can like but do yes, more Yukon things. Is the one I'm I didn't have to worry about skill points. What happens in this one.
Absolutely. It looks and now like you're going to see me do what I talked about easily with, with blade, piloting this character. To those ads. I'm going to pop Yukong's ult. <laughs> yeah. Yo, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Okay, we're going with the ultimate here straight from Yukong. No we're going crit. A big attack here on Blade. And we're going to smash out that ultimate fully buffed. The reason I hit in the middle was so that the Trotter would die and immediately trigger the DOTs. Yeah, 116k, very nice. Triggering that MOC buff there, getting that Trotter debuff. Definitely, unfortunately, we're not gonna have the damage to do it in zero cycles this way, but I definitely think- the And the reason I do this here is so that everything lines up, Yukong will still have her buff active, and then Blade, as long as he can get hit three times, that's the goal, because you see, one, he can go twice, right? He's gonna go twice, and then two, and then three one cycle is perfectly safe and judging on the hate but i didn't get the hits down to, but the you see i did not get them hits that one i still don't think it's a massive threat to us we've got the heal coming back up you had i gotten the hits that would have been perfect one, uh, dude pretty fine and that's the great thing with this team you can spam as many skills as you want with you kong and links because you've just got an abundance of them and blade doesn't really use too many absolutely a little bit unfortunate we did have to end up with a heal on the enemy there here but it looks like we're gonna get a pretty big combo here a and now i don't i don't have yukong stuff anymore blade, and he does look to have quite a lot of energy here so we might be getting a another ultimate straight up here we're gonna get that wind break there and hopefully it'll be triggered by the trotter it is a nice big chunk of damage there can we get they refused. This cycle here, Vulcan? They refused. The coming up. Yeah, I think the sparkle boost is going to keep us safe. We have the option to get some additional break on there. We don't need to use the skill here with Yukong. It's not providing too much to Blade, and she was going to get her ult just off of the basic attack. So playing it safe there. And I don't think we're going to see too many issues. It's a matter of whether we want to use some of these ults or rely entirely on the Blade skill because we will not have access to... Oh, he does get the dot trigger, so he will get his follow-up here. So between There's Yukong... The ult. The blade and now I get three attacks with blade. I get basic, ult, and ultimate. talent. So he should be able to get it done. It's going to be a little bit tight. He is checking where exactly he is at at the moment. And I'm hoping we can see the damage from this follow-up. Get it done. We do have the horse taking a turn. And that dot damage will be able to finish it off anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Getting into the next phase with an ultimate available to blade. Getting the first cycle done in one cycle is very very good as well sorry the first wave there so we're gonna get this yangqing down quick smart and set a great time hopefully yeah definitely good poised, <laughs> yeah. And poised hey, yo thank y'all for the follows i appreciate that finish off that first wave uh with that follow-up attack into the now i'm capped off in my hp checking his blade all the time uh and not sure exactly what he's looking for maybe turns left uh, it doesn't really yeah matter, this is the undertale music got abundance of skill points get that big ult for 74k into the basic attack for 66 quite respectable see if they would just hit blade top off because the Yukong, <laughs> once again is getting they would have just hit blade work. it's okay probably gonna skill with the yukong just to generate that extra energy in this one i would assume unforged absolutely okay the swords are what was i looking for to trigger blades talent as much as possible to stack up 80 to 120 damage uh on everything as often as i could the reason that yukong's like ult and stuff like that was being popped as much was so she could always have ult in the in the event that you see now blade has like four out of five right it was so that when he's like at four out of five and i know he's gonna get hit i'm gonna pop her ult get all of the damage the crit boost guaranteed crit everything and then he's gonna hit and because sparkle the way her talent works uh he keeps all the damage buffs that she would have given until his next turn so it was just a matter of being unfortunate out here and blade very strategically i imagine by eo has five charges straight up a boom 201k perfectly planned by eo there taking the sword out almost effectively immediately yeah that was perfect play there the last two swords not much health remaining don't have to worry about trying to find the break on these things you're just going to destroy them with blade also getting that trotter down at the same time was super clutch getting those extra dot applications yep now, now i can basic right here cycle but can we clear it in this next cycle that is going to be the question. Okay, the reason I'm ulting here is to try and like get dance, dance, here, dance. Because we will have links and sparkle up next. I'm thinking that you might want to break here or something like that because he did go ahead and use that fairly early there. Or well, you do seem to be cooking a pretty big turn here on Blade with that ultimate available and almost ready. Yeah, he's probably going to queue up the ultimate. Didn't queue it up straight yeah. away. Okay, and this should sure, give me my I'm talent. Not sure on the play he is going for here. Uh, is he going to save the ultimate? Okay, he is saving the ultimate. Okay, he's trying to queue up his follow-up, maybe? I'm not too sure. It feels like a lot of wasted energy there. That it must be a bigger brain play. Than Looking what... back at it, 
I feel like I should have ulted and then basic, but the problem was I wasn't going to break uh, Yang Ching. And I, I didn't have the Yukong buff. So I just wanted, at this point, I want damage. I can comprehend. Can you see what's going on with that ultimate? On RNG Blade? got me through the whole game, bro. He's maybe waiting they they have not been hitting Blade Sparkle as often as they should at all. Damage boost to try and get a bigger ultimate. That way, uh, we'll have to see. Or maybe he's trying to break. Or I'm not 100% sure. But that Trotter is getting low here. So we are going to get a pretty big uh, damage burst here on Yang Ching. Because he already has a wind shear, a bleed, and a burn on him. Definitely. So there is that Sparkle ultimate uh, going in to boost the blade. I 100% 100 expect to see that ult come straight away. Unless he's waiting for next round of swords or something like that. No, okay. There it is. He does get it off. 74k. We do get the Trotter to explode. We are going to get the break here. Oh. How much dot damage do and we... And see, this is what I meant by like, remember what happened earlier, right? Blade missed out on at least five different hits through, through each cycle. Had I gotten hit, all those times between each cycle, Yang Ching would be dead, or at least close to dead, to the point where this could have been a two cycle. This this wasn't a um because when I showed it the smack, and then like even Sarah said it, like, oh yeah, might have been able to get to like a one cycle. The problem wasn't the build, right? Like Blade's build isn't the problem at this point anymore. It was purely RNG. Stop the blade slant slander. I refuse. Yeah. Okay, not too bad on the 58k, but it's not going to be. Enough I to refuse in this cycle. But I think next cycle is a perfectly safe clear on this one. Absolutely. Well, yeah, we've got, we've might have been a two. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. It does look like we're going to absolutely get one turn here from Sparkle. But the question is, are we going to get two turns from Sparkle? And is that going to be enough to take Yang Ching out here in this very last cycle and get that really fast clear time? And we're not going to get the second sparkle in there. So we it's going to rely on doing this one. We do get the follow-up, which is going to be a big addition. And we get that pop. How much damage do we get? Okay, 9% left. Can Almost dead. Look at this, bro. Oh, Did y'all see Yukong's so HP? Close, so close to that ultimate as well. We're going to pop the Yukong ult. See what we can get out of this damage-wise. I think we might be Dance, dance, dance. Bring short. up sparkle and one more time. There it is. The dance, yep, dance, dance. Yep, I yeah, I, I knew I what I was doing. That, but the I, I ran it into my head so many times. I knew what there. I was doing. Sparkle to boost blade into this cycle. Gonna get the skill. Get this ult and then a uh, basic attack. He was done. Into the ult, and that should be a Link's taunt did not exist. Oh, definitely very, very nice. Did not <laughs> exist, bro. <laughs> Man. Here we are with Team 2, a side 1, a God Doggos running the composition of Locha, Bronya, Imbibitalune, and Hanya. What do you make of this one, Grimo? Well, first, I am shocked, Vulcan. I highly expected Imbibit to be on side 2, taking on Sam, but here he is. At E1 Bronya, boys. That that, this team looks pretty rough. I just got an E1 Bronya myself. Bronya and Imbibitor is no joke here, but we're going to lead off straight with a Bronya steal here into a huge Imbibitor. 198. Yeah, definitely D on the slow Imbibitor. Imagine if Blade could do that. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and yeah, skill That's all I'm issue. saying. We do have Hanya to alleviate, but we do have to play around with it very carefully uh, to make sure we don't run out of skill points by using that Hanya to try and generate an extra one along the way. So here we go. Hanya ult. Speed buff I don't think is going to be too effective here on the Imbibitor Lune because he's not going to overlap the Bronya. So it doesn't have the synergy on the speed, but we are definitely buffing him beyond belief with all these buffs and holding Hopefully, do you for Hanya? He him hitting Hanya with the adjacent or hitting the horse with the adjacent. That still gives him the we're skill point, right? We can get like he doesn't have to damage. the main Still target, the horse. Primary target, uh, on whether okay, to that's what I thought. Or not, or focus down this horse. Looks like we're going to be going for the horse. Just taking time to decide. Looking at the break bars, I think, because we can break with the Hanya on the next turn if we do go the horse, but we go to just hit everything. We do have the ult after a 246k skill. We're getting that ult. Now, is it an E2 Imbibitor? That's what I'm not sure, and that's what we have to see right here. Yeah, no see, my is... my Imbibitor does no, not hit this oh hard. Oh my goodness, how is this Bronya getting another turn? She's already had <laughs> yeah. two. She's getting a third one. Is this going to be thank a you, thank you. wave one? Imbibitor Lunar, eh? Pure Hot Wheel <laughs> speed. Oh, wait, no, that's Bronya. still Lunar. Eh? And I think we can get this done. Massive 197k, getting that first wave done in zero cycles. My goodness, Imbibitor Lunar really... I want y'all to know that took them six hours. I, I, I just... 
showing his stuff here but take a look at our still points here vulcan things are getting a little bit dicey we only have two no Amelia's six hours to, to do Hanya. if we do we're gonna have to take a turn off from a bib and a lunay a very tough call yeah definitely because you need to spend that point to get one back so it puts you in that awkward situation we do have loja on this team to generate some extra skill points but it's just not going to be enough uh for what we need to Good do breaks. so curious to see if we use the bronya basic here into triple uh imbibitor Okay, well, it definitely looks like we're going to have to consider our options here. Going for a skill, potentially. I mean, Bronya does have her ultimate almost available. So maybe we'll get an extra skill point from that. I haven't been really keeping a track if it's the signature or not. Okay, maybe the skill, maybe the basics. Mm, it's a very I'm, tough call. I'm thinking you basic right here, yeah? And you can do a triple stacked in Bibita, and then Bronya's got her next turn up quicker. But yeah, this is definitely a pickle because with the skill, she probably does get her ultimate. Okay, there we go. We get a triple stack on the Imbibra Lune. That is yeah, the same Yeah, then this play. gives you an ultimate plus another, another uh, skill point. Yep, from skill the point, exactly. Skill. Then we're going to generate another one from Locha using his basic attack. And then we can use the Bronya skill into Imbibra Lune on the next turn. So not too sure whether he's thinking about going for the Trotter there or something like that. Uh, but we do have Imbibra's ultimate up as well. Probably going to wait for the next Bronya turn to get that buff and the ultimate buff before we use that ultimate. Oh, absolutely. Really taking his time here to really consider these skill points. It's not easy playing this team. Absolutely not. Going to invest that skill point here in Hanya. Now we are once again in a pretty difficult situation, though, here. We're gonna, are we gonna use Bronya's skill here? Because if we do, we still won't have enough skill points to use in Bibita's three enhanced basic, even after his ultimate. Oh, it's a tough call. I don't know how he has to ult right here, yeah? Could he perhaps use Hanya on Bronya to speed her up to get her like an extra turn through cycles? Okay, that was too much copium i didn't know the speed sinking i thought maybe it could be a thing we've got to make our decisions now i think using the bronya alt is the play but even with he basic i don't think we actually we can basic with bronya Ooh, because we would have got the extra skill point from the alt on Imbibra Lune, which then would have had us at three Why skill didn't... points to allow Imbibra to use the three okay point. wait bronya's on the win set okay that I was, I was, I, that was the very first question. I'm like, why didn't that happen? Uh, basic. So curious to see here how much damage we do get out of this ult, but this is definitely a tricky team to play with managing these skill points. Absolutely, but it seems Rim that left we all the thinking in this play. A, an additional way to gain skill points here because we have an extra skill point left over. So I think this <laughs> yeah. is either an S1 uh, Bronya or an E1 Bronya there because we were able to get out of that pickle there pretty easily, which is absolutely fantastic here. Making use of those Eidolons on Bronya or the signature, I wasn't paying too much attention, but definitely getting some skill points back. Winset's the most fun in the game. Yo, Panda, Winset is very fun in the game. It's just a bastard to farm. Using Branya ult on Dill's turn means he keeps the Branya ult for one more turn. I thought that only worked during like resurgence type of abilities. Yeah, getting those two extra sanctuary squads. Is that just normal period for, for all of uh, from the Bronya ultimate. stuff? But yeah, I don't know where that bonus skill point came from, or maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention. But that is super solid. We did get the full on ultimate. Full yeah, that was definitely an E1 scenario. scenario. Absolutely fantastic. But like I said, there is so many things to. You have the light cone too, right? Position to try and get it done. Uh, I think this is one of those situations where. Bro, imagine having a maze light cone. You're gonna you're gonna get it guaranteed. On his <laughs> next attack, and then we get Bronya up quicker. It is. So super tricky even with that hanya seeming to be a skill point generator it's just not enough to reliably cycle through these two characters yes absolutely we could use the luocha ultimate here to gain an extra skill point but that still wouldn't give us enough to use bronya's skill on imbibitor and i'm skipping through bro manage like, this and still get this is enough uh speed to kind of i know why it took so long because like blade you guys were coaching through it but yeah, damn so it's, it's such i a thought he would have cut it out and i don't know why he's targeting the trotter when we can if when on his basic he can attack yang ching and uh generate that skill point so i'm not too sure what the play is there maybe he's gonna who's you guys you and doggos and just trying to get more damage in on the trotter definitely curious to see what the end decision of this one is but it, it, there is a lot of thought i don't know how many chests back with the and there we go action so he does go ahead and use the basic on the trotter and i wish i took go. this long we thinking in exams the skill points and we get frozen on the bronya now that exams is, or something I'm else man to see where that delays her into but i don't think it's going to be too bad she will get another turn i think with the damage you still can pull yeah they still pull this off with that damage because of daniel right i'm just 
I'm getting and then Vanya has, oh yeah, and then Daniel has another oh, turn absolutely. anyway. Okay, so he's gonna maybe opt to go for a three enhanced basic attack here, which should give him enough energy to access that Imbibitor Ultimate, which should hopefully give us enough energy to yeah. go Yeah, and, and then the DOT Vanya happens, Yang Ting takes the turn at the end. Yeah, this board. is definitely Especially a one cycle. This should be over. Um, okay, so we are using it. Yeah, we, we are okay though, because we do have Lurcher ult there to actually trigger it as well. So I think we're not into Yeah, and then see, look, Branya has the last turn at the end. Basic, but she like, is gonna get another this this one this particular cycle, cycle being clutch. as long as it is generation here this uh what is this is considered the first cycle right the first cycle being as long as it is is like so important for a lot of speed values because it just if you speed tune and have a bunch of different like advancing forward things happening uh, even if it's not 100 percent, it influences how many times you go so so fucking much dude it's ridiculous eternal what's popping big dog yeah no ddd and wind set are insane it is absolutely insane. Like, I love that more... Because even with uh, Yelov, right? I found out it was it's two Vs, not a W and a V. Even with Yelov, uh, I've been learning that there are so many different things that people are doing when you get to, like, a, an ascended level of thinking with the game that you can just flip the script. When you understand values in this game and how to manipulate them, oh, it feels so good. It's a matter of what he wants to do with the Imbibra Lune uh, because he will act before the Bronya. And whether he you guys are running out of skill points away, like crazy here, though. And see where the skill points fall. But once again, a lot of thought has to go into this team. Yes, there is that basic attack, just like you said, Vulcan. And it looks like we will get that extra Bronya turn. But the question I'm doing be, all right, Eternal. Doing all right. How you doing? That one more combo of ultimate into triple basic going to be enough to finish off this Yang Ching. 31% HP remaining. Ooh, and we do have an Imbibitor turn before Bronya goes, yes. so we do have quite a lot of stuff we can do. So will he use just an Imbibitor skill, wait for the Bronya buff before he uses the ultimate? That's what I'm curious to see. Mm, it's a tough call. We still have our Luotra ultimate as well, so we can trigger that Hanya passive here and get another skill point on top of that. I think we will have to use the ultimate or we'll be out of skill points for the Bronya and she won't be able to skill, so we need those extra stats yeah, you for have the to ultimate, ultimate right there. to even enable Bronya to use her skill. The only other option was a 2 And then Bronya point, should get her ult. Uh, skill first into yep. it. This but will this put you at two. The option, as you can see here, we go. Bronya uses well. skill point. This gives you ult. Boost. I'd be using the Lurcher ult and squeezing every little bit. And then you have to, yeah. E1 one had to trigger right here. Two skill points. Yeah, that that was such uh, a clutch hit, move. The ultimate. The ultimate. That was such a clutch. Like, had that not triggered, bro. And that is going to be enough to get another three enhanced basic attack. That would have. That would have been that that two cycle, man. Super clutch on the Bronya. That was a light clone ult. You don't know that. The reason I say that you don't know that is because if E1 has a 50-50 on triggering, S1 becomes irrelevant. S1 triggers every other ult. How do, you, how do you guys tell that? S1 triggers every other ult, right? That was S1, not E1? E1's on, oh, E1's on the skill. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that, that's insane. That's in, bro, that coin flip is fucking insane. Wow. No, I don't use Branya. I don't use Branya anymore. There's no point. None of my teams benefit from Branya. Oh my goodness. Yeah, none of none of my teams right, benefit from Branya. I don't use Branya team anymore. One, side two, taking on Sam. We have Gotcha Smack with the team. Finally got one of your streams. Just wanted to say hi. Oh wait, no, you didn't say hi. My bad. Thank you for not letting me skip on May and Acheron. <laughs> Dude, Houston, you're welcome, man. You're welcome, bro. Those are the best characters in the game. This is why my blade suffered. Well, it was either going to be the Unlimited Blade Works team, which is what I was preferring to go for and not Yukong. But that's not what happened. Um, so, yeah. Because it, it'd be different if, like, if I knew for a fact they weren't going to take uh, Kafka, I would have done it. I would have just grabbed Blade Branya right then and there. But we didn't know that. And it, <laughs> yeah. it put us in such a weird position because... They'd already banned Welt and Ratio. It, it was just like, honestly, it was just, it was completely the imaginary lockout fucked us over tremendously. If, if just one of the imaginary characters were left on the board, it would have been so much more fair to like have an even playing field. But nah. And then for me to like, I didn't, I didn't know that Smack's account, like you guys are going to see it here. Uh, does he have Acheron's like? He does have Acheron's. Like, so he went all out for Acheron. But. No, no maxed out talent, no maxed out skill. Eight, eight skill being on eight is okay because it ramps up. 
That talent, though, is so important because of the all-type pin. Excuse me. And it makes a big difference. Level 10 ult doesn't matter. Not, not that it doesn't matter and it's bad. It's, he needs that, too. Not having at least an 8, because I think, I think 8 is where you get like 17 or 16% on the all-type pin, something like that. And then each level after that, it jumps up twice. So it goes from 16 to 18% and then 18% to 20%. Having somewhere around like 9 or 10 would have sealed the deal on like having, you know, like a 5% uh, HP left over on an enemy versus killing it outright. Taking on Sam, we have relics. He doesn't have the uh, Azumo. Azumo also would have sealed the deal. Like he has 3,300 attack. Let me see the rest of the build though. Hold on. 84% crit rate, almost 200% crit damage. So like he's chilling, right? He's good, but I don't right, think, we are with team I don't one, think inert two, taking on Sam, is the better play here. But again, like I told you guys, this straight up comes down to like not being, yeah, no, Azumo's tough because he didn't have time to farm it. That, that's really all it is. Not knowing what you're looking for prior to it, or at least being able to test it out, and then having to build characters or anything like that that you probably weren't using before. Well, There's Akron, a lot. Pella, Kafka, and Japad. It's a pretty synergy. Halo with resolutions. Brutalent on Pela. Whoa. Is this is this crit Pela? What concerns do you have with this one, Grimro? Well, for me. Hold on, go back. Synergy with the team of Akron. No, this isn't crit Pela. It's just like speed Pela. Yeah, Kafka 145. And Japad. It's a pretty synergistic 145 team. Pela. What concerns do you have with this It's one? for the speed. Rudolent. I guess well, like there's a bunch me, of speed on the, on the Rudolent pieces. The only concern I really have in this Rudolent is doesn't just give you speed. Sam is going to... Smack, 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 smack. Why? <laughs> Why? Bro. Smack, one on one, real quick, real quick, real quick. No chat, no chat. Me and you, buddy. Me and you, brother. Brother, me and you. Why did you bring break Kafka? Why did you, br bro? Why did you bring you? Should have given me Kafka. We could have traded. We could have. You could have had Yukong. You could have. You could have offset, right? You could have offset the damage difference from not having the nihility unit. You could have given me Kafka, bro. Why did you bring Break Kafka? Like, don't get me wrong. Break Kafka is nasty, but not with Acheron because she's not doing the breaks. No, no, bro. Why did you do this? Moving on. This team out. With the, oh, with the build, how right? I'm not even worried about Japar because I know Japar's solid. How good he is at keeping up. I lied. I lied. Back? Brother. What's that dot piece doing down there, man? No! Is, is, this, is this my fault? Smack, is this, is this my fault? Did I... We shouldn't have got Japar. That's what... That's what it might have been. That's what it might have been. I'm, I should not have told you to get Japar. I should have let you get Fushwin. This is what this was. This is my fault. Up those shields at all times. This is yeah, my fault. And hopefully, we do have the burn cone on him so that he can keep applying those burns, giving Akron. This stacks. is my we fault. Do have a very solid team to form around Akron to give those stacks, and we did just get a. Stack I got to see how this plays out. AOE, yep. Akron yep. Is Defense that. down. And then we had the Pella skill generate that extra stack, and we're already Boom. into alt range for Akron. Go now you see, for you see why I said like the Kafka break. We'll we'll let it play out some more. But the Kafka break won't necessarily do enough. Game. Absolutely love to see this. 90k, 172k, Boom. 200k, 500k, 305k. Blam! I called it 500k. Yes, sir. Straight away. Yes, sir. No yes, sir. Soaking in that damage. Bang, bang. I don't care how long Akron now, something about Japar's ult that a lot of people don't know. Not a fault of smack. I saw him do it a lot during, this, uh, during his run. Um, and other people do this too, right? Japar's ultimate, the shields aren't based on Japar's turn. It's based on the character's turn. So when you have a situation... Everyone's been around. Okay, well, after this, you guys see how at the top, there's Japard, then Kafka, and then Acheron, right? Japard popping his ult right now means that when Kafka goes, that's one less turn for her to have shields. When Acheron goes, that's one less turn for her to have shields. What you should try to do 
yeah, hold it until the last member. So after Acheron, and right before the uh, Searing Blade guy goes, or this isn't Searing Blade, the, whatever the robot chainsaw <laughs> yeah. man is, then you try and do it. The shields don't last till it's gone? No. I, ideally, they do because, you know, you, you don't want to die. But yeah, in the event that they just never took away your shield, it'll go away. It's just so enjoyable to watch. That's Advent why 2P Speed, speed is a godsend. 2P Speed is only a godsend for certain things. 67K, uh, that's not bad damage. That's not bad damage, but like... 187. Okay, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's, gone. he's not dead. Why? Why? Why didn't that kill? What happened? It doesn't look like she needs it. What happened? And I just wanted to make note of that really nice basic attack used by Akron to proc the additional follow up by Kafka to All right. activate we're, her ult. It was the we're still in the zero out, cycle. That was a great play uh, to use that basic. We're still in the zero cycle. We have plenty of skill points. Oh, absolutely. So we do have an Akron We can freeze Sam. Available here, but Sam is already we can freeze Sam. Team. Pella is at half health, and I'm not seeing a Japan ultimate anywhere on site. No, Japati's lagging in the energy, so we're just going to we can have to go freeze on the deck Sam. To see what Come on. Do. Looks like he's trying to take care of the app. Come on. That's uh, what I want to see. In interrupted by those bleeds That's what I want to see. So freeze Sam. No. Not gonna get yes. Mm. Straight to the Fuck. Sam, okay. Hitting him with That's that okay. That's okay. That's okay. Kafka. That's okay. Dogs, we almost got it. Yes, sir. Straight into the ultimate, and then we're already back around to Akron. 144. That's not stats. bad. That's Currently, not bad. Yep. Skill on this guy. Broken, which is super handy. Ew. So we can do out of this one. We got a 45k skill. Nothing too phenomenal there. Here we but go. Now we're in we Sam territory. Up, I think we will get good some stuff. Nice good stuff. Level. With that enemy going down, Japard's shield is yep. just around the corner. Nine. There you go. That's an ult. And that is a that's an ult. That's an ult. Yes. Yes. Boom. Is a good effect, Boom. but we're rolling straight into this ultimate Boom. Acheron, getting a hundred and freeze K out of it. Oh. The reason I keep saying freeze is because E1 Japard with his light cone, which I believe is what Smack has, um, or he might have E0. I don't, I don't remember if he's one of the ones that lost 50 50s like myself as well. Freezing Sam shuts him down. If you can, he's E0. Okay, he's E0. If you can freeze Sam. You don't have to deal with a bunch of Sam bullshit. He's probably running an effect uh, rest. You mean effect hit rate? He had for the DOT because his fire DOT light cone is S1, if I remember correctly. Uh, his Jepard is S0 or E0. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Trend, you're right. You're right. He is running trend. He is running trend. I forgot about that. He's running trend. And zero cycling Sam is already insanely difficult as it is. But freezing him feels so damn good. Fushwin's right there because Fushwin doesn't really provide the same value. Um, like Fushwin's a little weird, right? Like, why would I recommend Japard over Fushwin? It's because of the freeze. Like, I'm I'm telling you, this the same way that I thought about freeze in 1.0 is the same way that I think about freeze now. Freeze is a mechanic that's completely slept on, but it it's not so much the fault of the player. It's that freeze is really hard to do and keep. It's really hard to do and keep. Oh, absolutely. Okay, we are burning though, Vulcan. So we need to keep that shield up at all Boom. times here, or we are going to be in trouble. Now, fortunately, these are some decent shields. The shield up here, but it's almost then right here. This is the big Giga attack. It's going to be gone. Yeah. Oh no, they still have some shield. This is good. This is good. This is they can take another dangerous. one. It is looking dangerous, but they can I take like another one. I, I know what the problem is here and why Smack didn't get what he needed. I know now. There comes the we are going to have the ultimate from Pelo getting that freeze defense, him, getting extra stacks, moving into Kafka once again, uh, getting extra stacks. Freeze also takes a lot of calculation when it comes to low cycles. Yeah. Stacks, getting extra applications, and we should be able to get ourselves a big. Just ult. click it. Do we want to skill with the Japard here? You want to skill with the Japard? Energy for the ultimate. I think he is within range, but we are going for the Akron ult here. Yep. 90k into 122 into Boom. 243k. Now we have seen. Now see what having a level 10 talent does for Akron. It allows you to ignore because Sam is one of the toughest bosses in the game because of the resistances and what he does. When Sam has shields up and you can, you know, do the toughness meter, this motherfucker still has like plus 90 resistance to whatever you're doing. Acheron having all type pin is really good in this scenario. Uh, and Kafka, I don't think Kafka was rocking her light cone, right? 
I didn't I didn't remember what I'm gonna go back to it and see, but I don't remember what Kafka was rocking. But he's not getting the extra the extra from it. He's using the simulated universe one. Oh, the the break uh I forget the name of that light cone, the one that breaks. Yeah, he he doesn't I, that's exactly what I was gonna say, Sarah. The problem right now is that he's not abusing what makes Acheron as busted as she is. He's he's playing the team like almost like if Acheron was a replacement for Swan. Not so much in the sense of like um like the debuffs, but he's he's got like another DPS on the team. And instead of instead of it being an Acheron focused team where the other three characters funnel energy by using the point system into Acheron to get ultimates like two because he could have gotten realistically speaking because i've already done this he could get three ultimates per cycle and i'll pull up the video just to prove my point but he can get like three ultimates per cycle he should have easily been able to like clap a lot of shit and continues to get ultimates but i see what's happening here i i see what's happening here yeah i don't even think it, it's not even the break kafka's fault entirely it's that break Kafka is not providing the debuff or, or the extended debuffs, I should say. Break by remaining. Oh, yes. It looks like we are probably going to have to use a skill here to get to Japan. Ultimate. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And he, he's not getting the freeze, which that's not a fault to smack. The, the fucking Sam has plus 90 resistance. We do also have Kafka's ultimate here. So the thing I'm looking for now, Vulcan, is can we break this Sam and turn his fire off so our team stops burning alive? Definitely. So not too bad. Yep, I think skill. we are going to be pretty safe with this. And un we are unfortunately, get hit by the next attack, he's not going to be able to pull it through from like the last little shield. skill here. The, honestly, super clutch on the energy. But it's it's okay. He should still be able to survive one more of these hits. Because if we didn't yeah, have shield, we yeah. Japar comes through. This is going to break oh, Sam. So this opens up Sam to true damage. And, it does look and like then he'll clean it up in this round. Right here on Sam. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Actually, very nice. Skill point. No, see, Pela could be using her skill points and she's not. Pela's not yeah, popping so those skill now, points. Freeze him. We can get this damage yet. Unfortunately, Akron doesn't Freeze him. Until just after the next cycle. So we're not going to be able to do Just for the one time. Oh. We'll put it on the screen at the end. But I'm pretty sure it's a two cycle clear. We are going to Ah, oh, but Vulcan, fuck you man. forgot Acheron has her ultimate available. Fuck so man! Is it, it's gonna be enough to take a 20 percent here along with Kafka's move. God oh, damn it, bro! It yeah, DOT is gonna take him out, though. The pig into the dot tick. God damn it, smack, bro! Listen, listen. Ugh. If if there were ever a time we could trade, I wanted you to pilot Yukon Blade so bad because I know you know it. I know you know Blade Yukon, bro. I, I hated piloting that team. If we could have traded teams, if we could have traded teams, gen I genuinely, we would have won. I think if we would have traded teams, we could actually, it would have either been a draw or we could have won. You could have one cycled that. If we would have traded teams, you could have one cycled that. Oh, man, bro. That would have been, bro, if we, if we matched, that'd be the first draw. Smack said we won. There's a whole, like, conundrum behind that. So, I'll explain it after the video. Because we're already an hour deep. <laughs> this will get cut down to, like, 40-ish minutes, though, maybe. Because, like, a, lo a lot of the uh, fluff was in Doggo's part. Smack's is really quick. Like, his, his part was really quick, really fast. Yeah, you're right. I was not paying attention to the stacks. Yeah, and we two cycles still done. solid. All right, but that, that absolutely could have pissed. The two. thing is, he did a lot during the zero cycle to get him to Sam, and that was the important part. Clearing the first wave within the zero cycle and still having plenty of stuff to do, because you basically get two free cycles. If you clear in the first cycle at a zero cycle, right, you basically get two cycles to do the same shit. And doing all of that, triggering Sam or, or weakening Sam enough to the point where a lot of his stuff doesn't matter, taking out the robot next to him, uh defeating two trotters all that kind of stuff really good and then having kafka on that team to constantly re-trigger those dots oh man now if his kafka i know that his kafka will run it i'll try and run it later on tonight i know that his kafka didn't have um the sig the signature light cone but having permanent like having glamoth but not reaching the extra damage if he did have light cone he would have popped 160 which would have given him permanent's maximum like 18 percent damage increase and he would have just Boom, re-trigger, boom, re-trigger, boom, re-trigger. So all those DOTs, bam, 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 bam. It would have been so nice.
We have Moon running the team of Acheron, Black Swan, Silver Wolf, and Ho Ho. Once again, this side, we do have a pretty synergistic team. What are you thinking? Of wow. E1 Silver Wolf? E1 Black Swan? All signature light cone? Wow. No wonder we lost on this one grim Oof, i think this is a fantastic team and one i would pick for myself here silver wolf is a huge <laughs> asset to have against sam hopefully you're oh no out. steve hear me out 100 percent salty absolutely there, there's no denying that whatsoever 100 percent salty i don't know if you were here from the beginning of the video but i got cut at the very beginning of the draft this was purposeful okay i want you to understand Moon did everything on purpose. This was not a fair draft by normal means. This was a fuck Ioku overdraft all the way through. So I will absolutely be salty. 1,006%. You, you will not have... Look, 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 look. Hold on. How much sodium is in this can, bro? There are five milligrams of sodium in this can, which results in 0% of a daily value, right? Out of the can, there is 0% sodium basically in this can. I want you to amplify that by like plus 999. I have that much sodium in my system right now. Whenever I watch Destiny do anything for the last three weeks, 999 sodium has automatically been played on the field. You know, like in Yu-Gi-Oh, you've activated my trap card, Yugi. That 999 sodium, free, easy. The trap card is sodium. <laughs> for fast breaking on him to minimize damage and maximize output of your team. Definitely, and we do have plenty of debuffs to apply with this team, so it shouldn't be an issue. We are lacking a preservation unit that can apply the extra debuffs through the burn cone, but I think with the rest of this team, we're going to have no issues getting one extra damage, two extra damage. Were you waiting on silver here? Oh, you already did silver. There you go. Okay, I was going to pop it. So I think it's a very synergistic team, and as long as we do have enough healing out of this uh, ho, ho we should be pretty fine. Uh, obviously, the energy going amiss because we don't need it on Akron, but still going to be huge on the Silver Wolf, who do, does often have a little gap in her energy regeneration burn cone but i think with the rest of this team we're gonna have no issue damage two extra break and then extra stacks out <laughs> yeah. of this acheron so y'all thank y'all for the followers i appreciate that team. and as long as we do have enough i've heard celsius lie side, about their macros pretty fine. i'm not gonna lie to you straight i don't even know like i'm not at a macro level yet to even understand what i'm looking for in drinks on Akron, but still going to be huge on the Silver Wolf, who does often have a little gap in her energy regeneration, which can maybe get made up for by the Hoi Hoi. Oh, absolutely. Very interesting to see this Akron is a very fast Akron compared to Gotcha Smack Slow Akron, so it'll be curious to see which one ends up being a little bit stronger here. And it's going to be really critical, it seems, from this team, which I'm seeing. Wait, I, th I thought you didn't run your 130. Did you run 130 uh, speed Akron? I thought you ran... Attack build Acheron this time. 102 Acheron versus 110. 102. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I think Vulcan to get another Acheron ultimate here. Because I'm not sure Black Swan's dodge can get this done. Oh, well, maybe I'm wrong, actually. That I think he believes damage. that it's faster because you've done more design. damage. We do have some breathing space to see how much damage it deals. And we get it done easily. Okay, and we've got the ultimate ready from Silver Wolf straight up. Putting the yep, damage this is into nine. Sam. Not worrying about waiting for it to get break application. We're just going straight in for it. And this Silver Wolf is going to have another ultimate ready by the time. We do have access to his break bar anyway. And we do have that extra weakness applied. There you go. So we are safe Wham. to break this Wham. guy if we need Wham. to. And getting some big damage Boom. out of that Akron with another The OT happens. He's going to take a lot of damage. Go. One, though, is absolutely out of control. She is doing as much damage and keeping up with Akron while also supporting Boom. It's incredible. Yes. And, but we this is and like what's funny when people kept telling me that Swan or not Swan, Pale of Silver was the best. And I kept telling them that you're, you're bugging like your you're brain, you're brain rotting right now. You are intellectually malnourished if you keep saying Pela Swan or Pela Silver is the best. I've been trying to tell people, and it's not just me. Swan, yes. Everything that Pela, Swan's a better Pela, free. Everything that Pela does, Swan does with her skill. Let's keep it a buck. Then Swan has everything else in her kit that Pela does not have. It's awesome. E1 Swan plus Trotter help a lot. I promise you guys, E1 Swan does not make a, as big of a difference as y'all like pointed out to be. Swan is just dumb. Swan is a, she, the same shit that I keep telling y'all. She is a 2.0 character. All 2.0 characters are fucked up. They're all stupid.
in some way, shape, or form, they're all dumb. They're all dumb. Now, g- gaining an E1 is obviously, obviously going to help any character, right? But E1 does not make Swan do something that she couldn't do at E0 and just the same shit. I can't afford all these characters. <laughs> We are definitely taking some damage, so are we opting not to use you the skill? You said E1 Swan okay. probably saves a cycle. <laughs> Looks like we'll we see. weren't going to use the skill there for a second. I was going to be If it's a close survival, shave, I could, I could believe it. Now. We've got that ult but I, I think We're Sam is just straight up a build difference. Ult ready to go as well. Now, Opting what's interesting, straight. though, I will point out the ERR of Swan. Um, I might have to steal that. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, if that keeps up ult, I don't... Because you, do you, you don't get a two, ty- uh, two cycle, right? Yeah, maybe E1 is fucking dumb. Swan, yeah, Swan doesn't give you a two-turn ult, yeah? If it gave you a two-turn ult, you know what? I'm going to test that after this, too. After this, we'll test it. Well, I have to do the thing. There's so much I got to do tonight. We're going to have a decent little stream, but whatever. Into it, maybe continue. the stacks. I didn't know if we would wait. Uh, Sam does have another turn. Doesn't take a turn until after Silver Wolf. Anyway, Who do I think so is the best team? Swan, Pela? Energy back up with Silver Wolf. So we're pretty safe on that one. Absolutely. Gonna go Swan ahead Silver. and use that Black Swan Ultimate here. Really stacking. Swan Pela's Swan Pela's insane. Don't get me wrong. Swan Pela's really fucking good. The re- I would say Swan Pela's good or better if they're already weak to lightning. But I think Silver overall is is the better partner when paired up with Swan because it it guarantees your weakness no matter what. It guarantees that they're going to get broken. It guarantees that they're going to take damage. It guarantees like your your uh your win set bullshit silver can act as a third sub d or a second sub dps character like there's a lot that goes into it and if you're worried about like sustain for instance right quantum delay entanglement pack it up pack it up imagine quant like imagine entangling sam right breaking sam with quantum and then entangling the sh- boys going all the way down to the second cycle he's not getting another turn he will skip an entire turn it looks like the plan here, but oof, are we gonna go ahead and try and use the acro? No, we're not. We're gonna go with a basic attack there. Basic attack has skill point issues, and we're trying to generate energy on that. So, Wolf, no, we are just stacking up some skill points. So, I'm curious to see what the play was going for. Are you are you saving skill points because you know Sam is gonna enter his uh his play mode, and you want to use them all then? two basic attacks there because if, if that's the case that's a really smart to, play i would have uh, done the same thing skill here or maybe we are planning on the necessity hold on go back i want to i want y'all to see something i want y'all to see something to, uh, look at look at the top right corner 105 105 no one better ever talk to me about fucking swan and pala ever again there should never be a point in time that we're comparing swan and pala ever never again never again 50 percent thanks to the trotter even if it wasn't the trotter's fault 50k from DOTs. And she's she's not even stacked up. Let me let me just make sure. Where were you stacked up? Four. 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 Sam has four arcana on him. Four. 50k is not even like the minimum. This isn't even the minimum. I want you to understand that, right? Had this been seven or ten, that 105 would have turned into 135. Had this been 15 or 20? Pack it up. There when Ho-Ho doesn't have to. It goes up with all the Trotter DOTs. I, I think you are severely underestimating or misunderstanding what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, without a Trotter, Swan does this damage on her own. The Trotter amplified her damage at a low... Like, okay, four Arcana for Swan, right, is low. There's, there's zero... I guess you yeah. can never have zero, right? There's one to 50. She's at four. So you're all the way down here. And with the Trotters, 50 extra percent or 50% extra, you are still popping 100K down here. And your peak is 50. He's higher after the dot proc. Uh, use her skill. Six. <laughs> you're not beating me here, bro. <laughs> Six. She still didn't hit seven. That Trotter is not pulling the weight that you think it is. That Trotter is not pulling in the weight that you think it is, my friend. This is a big reason why I told y'all E1 does not make as much of a difference as y'all were making it out to be. She is at six out of 50. Six out of 50, my friend. How do you even get 50 before someone goes? A bunch of delays, maximum DOT, stupid ass damage, really fucking fast here or maybe we are planning on the necessity to use a ho-ho skill to heal uh is 
E zero Acheron is perfect. I I have gone back and forth between who I think the best partner is for Acheron. I genuinely think like as, as I solidify my my me being the Acheron main, as I solidify it, Swan Silver Pela. That that's like the order that I'm thinking. Right, Swan is number one. The 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 thing with Swan, and now that I say this. That specialist, this is so off topic. That specialist category on the PvP tier list still fucks with me because I like it, but I don't like it because I, I can't determine if Swan needs to be in there or not because she's not an enabler. She's just broken. Like, if I could find a reason to put Swan in S plus tier, I would do it in a heartbeat. It's what we were lining up. No, we're using another basic. Okay, we're up to four skill points. So we're Swan is not our hyper carry. No, 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 no. Damage with that black Swan here. Swan yeah, is so just nasty. She's everything. Available. The question is going to be: Do we want to use it immediately? Yep. Look, putting the win weakness and on Sam. Huge. Does she have enough healing? And you're asking like how to stack those Arcana? She's at ten now. And here we go with that ultimate going into what a 500k. Boom. 500k. Getting the pop on the trot. Boom. Then he goes all the way up to 14. 189. What did I just tell you earlier? At four, she hit 105. 14, 189. It's a massive dot damage in there as well. You and you still we got another 40 here, something or 30, 36. Uh, we, we're she got another 36 to go. Uh, even if we take a bit of health damage, we should be fine. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you for the follow. I believe here on the Silver Wolf. You have to pop this skill. skill. But you got to decide what you want to do because Ho Ho is going to run out of her buff. So she will want to skill. Some, someone okay, would die here anyway. I think Hopefully you, we don't get you, you did. Okay. Now I see why you're you're saying that this one was a close shave. You're at six, six, seven. Swan would make eight. You could have gotten another ult because you would have taken the damage regardless. Getting straight into those ultimates, but you could have broken Sam, which would have it would have immediately killed him. From the damage taken, which is you would have you would have done skill that would have given you given you six. You would have popped him, right? And then Swan would have gotten everything Super else. Super clutch there, getting into the Black Swan after the Silver Wolf, yep. getting a good yep, yep, chunk yep, 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 of damage yep. in. And where that that little bit of the skill would have popped him, and you wouldn't have had to do any other. Like th this wouldn't have been a close shave. That you guys were saying like it was a close shave. You wouldn't have had a close shave. Had you, you would have killed right then and there to the point where he wouldn't have done damage. Where are we at? He's at tiny, almost non-existent break bar, and I think we're pretty safe to get it here. We're at eight yeah. stacks on the Akron. You, you would have gotten have the damage. Turn coming up. So like I right here, you didn't even have to heal. To get our ultimate and get the job done in this cycle. Absolutely, what an incredible run. The absolutely insane use yep. of Huah Huah ultimate healing there to keep it alive, and Akron is going to bring us... You also could have done... This is something that I talked about. Remember when I, I mean, obviously you wouldn't have known it because I didn't put it out at the time. I talked about this with a fire MC and I showed it off. You could have broken with Ho-Oh. That would have given Acheron nine just in case you didn't have nine, right? Let's say that you only had seven, like originally it was going to line up to be um, without the energy boost. You would have had seven. Ho-Oh would have broken. That would have given you eight. Then you would have used Swan, anything. Swan would have given you nine. You would have ulted with Acheron. That would have guaranteed you had ult. So like, that's why I say regardless of E1 Swan, you could have pulled this off. It was just a matter of how you piloted it towards the end, but you definitely could have either broken him so that there was like none of this bullshit would have happened and his turn would have came up and then he would have clack, 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 and died. And we have a black swan turn coming up. So I think that is going to be enough to get our ultimate and get the job done in this cycle. Absolutely. What an incredible run. The absolutely insane yeah. use of then clean it up there. Healing there to Overall, Akron is going to bring us home for a ridiculously fast clear here, Vulcan. And a nice I think little overkill on that one. I think this PvP overall, I think it set a really good precedent for the different types of play styles and what can happen in sorrow. You had my run with the blade Yukong, which was unconventional. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the follow. It was unconventional, but I still I showed what I would consider and someone could have made it, you know, optimize it more. The best possible way, RNG included, right? RNG in mind, the best possible way to pilot a team like that with Yukon. Doggos, <laughs> yeah. I will give credit to Moon, but Doggos was still able to do it with her coaching, was able to show you guys the power of us. You don't need Sparkle, right? Daniel doesn't need Sparkle, which is a big reason why 
Sarah said it. I've said it. A few other Daniel mains have said it too. Sparkle doesn't significantly change Daniel's position in the tier list or in the meta. It's just that players who will call them unaware, they don't play these teams. They don't experiment because they're parrots. They believe Sparkle is like creme de la creme. This is what happens. Sparkle added comfortability to Daniel. I won't take that away. Even I like Sparkle's comfortability, right? But he didn't need it to still be able to do the same things that he would want to do. Smack is once again showing off break Kafka, but with what I'm looking at, this also showed me, I'm not gonna lie to you, this might be how the majority of Acheron players play Acheron. As I think about it, and I'm looking at this from like a free to play perspective, right? Cause like looking at the way Smack played it, it puts a much more free to play perspective in mind on how Acheron players play. And this is why I think Acheron players are not even as Acheron players, other people who either don't have Acheron and like repeat shit or they have Acheron. Like, you know, those comments that you see in YouTube, right? I get them all the time. My Jing Yuin clears more than Acheron or he clears the same. I don't see the big hype about Acheron. She she clears just as uh, as much as Daniel and Jing Liu. She, she, in fact, she does less damage. My Acheron doesn't even out DPS my Jing Liu. Like Jing Liu is clearly the better deep. I think this is how they perceive Acheron gameplay where it's like you're playing the game and this is no offense to Smack, right? I don't want anyone to take that, right? But it, it's a clear, this is when Smack wasn't fully aware of like what he could do with Acheron. You know what I mean? Like th this is very much, bam, we just got Acheron. She just released. Hey, get, get this tournament done. Get this PVP done, right? You see that his build for Jafar wasn't complete. You see that the Pela didn't have like certain stuff. This is like straight up brush mode. You got to get this out right now. He didn't have the proper time to play with Akron and like fully understand her. You know what I mean? Like and test her out, figure out what she does because he just doesn't have access to be able to do that. And now I'm seeing it. This is what I think a lot of players think or feel as though Akron plays like. And this is not Akron game. Like it is Akron gameplay, obviously, but this is this is not the ideal Akron gameplay at all. There were a lot of things that Smack could have done that would have fucking crushed this run. The one cycle could have easily been matched. And then this would have turned into a, if we were using the point system, then it would be more convincing that like, okay, we won or it tied easily. Cause it'd be one to one and then three to one on top of all the other light cones, the Adalons, things like that. And then it would balance out in, in a much more convincing manner. But my point being is that if Moon could one cycle with it, Smack could have optimized this to one cycle. Kafka and Acheron by themselves pull in, they pull in fucking weight together. Adding Pela so that the damage across the board is just fucking even. Oh my goodness. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. I like this. And then obviously Moon the cheater had the best run just being able to showcase a lot of what Akron is truly able to do using swan and even she has some mistakes towards the end but point being is that you saw a lot of the win set being taken advantage of you saw a lot of how Akron was gaining her ultimate uh i think she did it twice per turn if i'm not mistaken that last cycle i think you got three ults i could be wrong yeah one two and then three at the very end so a lot of that e1 silver go burr e1 silver does add a lot of a lot of uh energy i I'm not gonna lie to you, Silver gonna get the, the stacks no matter what. Oh, and then yeah, ERR Swan, which is something now I'm looking at ERR Swan because if I'm able to get Swan to have Epiphany for the entire turn, right? Like like the entire time that Acheron is just murdering things, if I'm able to have that, I'm probably gonna switch my rope to ERR rope if it's not already on that. I don't like Von Quack. I will not be using Von Quack on my Swan because I don't wanna go back to it. Also, hold on. Uh, by the way, guys, that's pretty much gonna be the end of the video. Thank you for watching today's video. I know this is like a whole hour and a half, but I really wanted to go over a lot of things. I might have cut now like 15 to 20 minutes of this if you're watching this on YouTube. But other than that, that's gonna be it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you like the video, comment, subscribe, all that crap. I'll see you later.